This is a question which viewers have been asking on the channel for a long time now. Where do Ontario's mountain lions come from? What is the source? How have they been able to get themselves reestablished in Southern Ontario after being regionally extinct here for almost 200 years? Well, everyone kind of has like their own theory on this. For example, some people believe that they've all been secretly stalked by the government, claiming that they know which specific towns are getting more cougars than others. And some feel that they're only just exotic pets that got released from private collections. However, my own personal findings, which has been submitted to me by you guys with your own evidence, and just the established facts on the internet by government agencies, suggest a completely different source. In this video, I'm going to explain what that source is, why I feel cougars are from there, and uh, I will expand on the future of this channel as well. I have personally come to the suspicions and conclusion that Ontario's mountain lions are coming from the northern peninsula of Michigan. Please let me explain. There's a lot of reasons why I came to this conclusion. Uh, starting with that Michigan is basically our only neighbor currently that has reproducing established populations of mountain lions. It's been very good news that for the first time in over 200 years, some lucky guy managed to capture photos of cougar kittens on his drive to work or home or something. I kid you not, there's like a photo of a cougar kitten near his tire and it's so HD, it's so good. Imagine my envy, right? And it got confirmed that they have cougar kittens in their lands. So if just now they're capturing that evidence, which is not easy to do, and they're capturing it by happenstance, very likely these animals have been breeding there for years, maybe even decades now, as it's not really an easy thing to capture. Uh, you, we should by no means say that this is the first ever cougar cub that has been born in Michigan. It probably is not. So what that tells me is likely these growing animals, these juvenile cougars need new territory. So they're known to travel very far, right? and Michigan, that peninsula is so much closer than North Dakota or Thunder Bay when talking about Southern Ontario. So it's so likely that they're kind of crossing over the Sault Ste. Marie, Canada border. I actually called the local conservation authority in Sault Ste. Marie and I, I just genuinely asked, like, is it possible for the animals to cross over the St. Mary's River into Canada? And her answer was, yeah, totally. Like even large animals like moose cross the border all the time. Uh, they, if they're good swimmers, they can just go from island to island right across, or like St. Joseph's Island, for example, which gets a lot of cougar sightings. Or they could uh, just wait until winter when there's ice and just walk over and take their time. It's very possible that a lot of Southern Ontario's cougars are initially from Michigan. And it's even more possible because of this that perhaps areas like Sault Ste. Marie or other locations also have little cougar kittens walking around which we aren't detecting. Let me be clear though, this is not to say that there's never ever been cougars in Southern Ontario from other sources. That would be ridiculous. Of course there could be uh, cougar populations from Northern Ontario and Northern Quebec coming down here. Uh, populations that we did not know about and it's also possible that perhaps they've made the long walk all the way from Thunder Bay over here. These animals can walk for a long time, but Michigan's a lot closer uh, and actually has a reproducing population. This seems to be the most likely source of where these animals are coming from. Now, I am truthfully sorry if this has crushed anyone's core belief that cougars are being stalked by the uh, government, but to be honest, I believe that perhaps some people have seen what they've seen and they've been genuine with me. Uh, it's, it's no stretch to say that cougars could have tracking collars on them, perhaps, from the MNR. But to me, it's just more likely that they're just tracking wild cougars. And uh, it's also like the exotic pet theory, guys. Like, I'm sorry. I know a few individuals have been captured in Southern Ontario where the cougar had... Uh, trim nails you know and it was just kind of like uh, an exotic pet right 
but I think that's a very, very low percentage of Ontario's population. Maybe 25 years ago, that would have been the case. Totally. But now, no. It's okay if you disagree with me. That's what the comment section is for, right? I'm not a scientist. I'm just a random guy on YouTube. And I'm just figuring this out as I go along. Now, as talked about in the start of the video, I also want to tell you guys what's been new with my project, Mountain Lions of Urban Ontario, and also what I want the future of this uh, channel to really accomplish. So let's start with new photographs that have been submitted to me by the public. This one that we'll start with is very exciting. These photographs were captured in Teeswater, Ontario at the start of this very year. And after submitting them to my wildlife conservationist friend, he has personally confirmed that he highly suspects them to be a mountain lion. Uh, these photographs were captured in Birch, which is just kind of like a little hamlet south of Brantford, and also other photos which we're trying to investigate as well. Starting immediately too, I really want to separate two different topics about big cats that I've been talking about on the channel, because there's two very different goals which I typically am discussing. Uh, I have the goal of capturing cougar cubs in southern Ontario and getting undeniable video evidence of them. And I also have another goal, which I seem to have picked up uh, through doing that work, and that is trying to capture footage of exotic big cats, like black panthers, for example, being loose in southern Ontario, most likely suspected now from the exotic pet trade. However, there will be a video on that that gives a lot more updates and clarifications as I've learned a lot of new things and I want to share them with you guys, of course. But in case you guys haven't noticed, I really want to work hard to have this channel appeal to a broader audience. I really want to have this take off and grow even more. I want it to be the official channel for all things fish and wildlife related in Ontario. So in the future, we're going to have more videos on fishing. We're going to have more videos on other rare animals in our province. And we'll even reach out to perhaps other parts of the globe occasionally to try and reach new viewers to the channel. Also, some of you may have noticed as well that I have officially now turned on channel memberships. Now, <laughs> please don't be upset or mad at me. I have no intention of disrupting the rhythm I've currently had on this channel. Everything's going to go on the same as it usually has. This is just something I turned on because it's going to help fund my research more for mountain lions in southern Ontario. And I feel it's a feature which viewers who are heavily invested in my work would really enjoy. So let me tell you what I'm going to do with it. For channel members, they will be notified about updates on big cats being in southern Ontario the moment I get notified on it. The very moment someone sends me a new photograph of a possible mountain lion or Black Panther or something, it will be posted on the members only feed. You also will have a more in-depth view at what my own cameras are picking up as I'm getting videos and photos of black bears, cougars, oh, sorry, not cougars, coyotes, <laughs> a lot of coyotes, and uh, just really funny things that people are doing on my cameras. And uh, it's something that heavily invested viewers will enjoy. And if you also like fishing, I have designed a fishing map for all of the brook trout and brown trout stream spots in zone 16 of Southern Ontario. So right before trout opener, you'd have like your own private fishing map, more or less, where you can help track down where you want to visit uh, right on opening day. Areas that have exact locations with photographs of the, what the fish were, roughly in size, that'll really help you gauge the best spot to visit in Southern Ontario. There's roughly, I think, about 450 pins on that map, uh, labeling 60 different bodies of water. So if you're into fishing, that'll be something you definitely enjoy as well. Once again, guys, if this is not for you personally, please don't worry or get upset. This channel will continue just as it has and you won't notice any changes. I really am very deeply appreciative of all my viewers, including you, because without your interest, this never would have really been a big thing. It never would have taken off. So thank you guys for watching once again, and we'll see you on the next video.